This is the Rydon X1 Primal, 4-16 power by 44mm rifle scope. Rydon lent me the scope to test out, and it's a really nice looking scope, but we're here to evaluate more than just its aesthetics. We're here to test its performance and suitability for 100 yard 22 rimfire shooting. So let's take a look at what you get. So right off the bat, I have to say that Rydon has possibly the nicest looking package design of any optic I've owned or reviewed. Now, the package design with its topographic lines in the box it looks really high-end. I know that sounds a little superficial, but it really sets up the expectation that you're getting more than you paid for. Inside, it doesn't disappoint. Now, Rydon is an Arizona-based optics company that is veteran and law enforcement officer owned. The scope comes with a cleaning cloth, a warranty card, an Allen wrench, and a spare turret screw. This is for removing the turrets to reset the zero. And a promotional sticker. Rydon competes with other mid-range, upper mid-range optic brands like Vortex and Athlon, and Rydon offers a very generous lifetime warranty on their products that's transferable if you sell your scope. The body has a 1-inch tube with a nice matte black finish. The zoom ring has a built-in throw lever and turns very smoothly, and the throw lever is user-removable should you not wish to have it. It comes with pop-up lens caps, and the objective lens has an emerald green coating. Rydon says their lenses are made of HD glass, which is a bit of a marketing term. The side-mounted parallax dial turns smoothly, but interestingly doesn't have very many range markings other than 10 yards and infinity. Underneath the waterproof caps we find finger-adjustable turrets. The turrets feel and look very well made, with clear printing on the hash marks of the adjustment dial. The adjustments are a quarter MOA per click. The clicks themselves are audible and tactile. Overall, I got the impression that it was a well-built, well-constructed scope. But as we know, the proof of the pudding is in the glass. So let's take a look at the optics. The scope features Rydon's RUT reticle, which is a modification of a traditional duplex reticle. The central crosshair is a kind of European T-style with a half MOA dot at the center and one MOA hash marks for windage and elevation. Starting at 4 power, I'm centering the crosshairs on a radio tower on a hilltop exactly 5 miles away. Now I've got the scope dialed up to 16 power and I'm adjusting the parallax and refocusing the camera. So this is the clarity of the image at maximum magnification. Now at 16 power we lost a little bit of light and some of the eye relief. But the biggest thing to note is that the eye box got very very narrow with this particular scope. Now an eye box this small is okay for bench shooting but for hunting you're probably best off keeping it around 9 or 10 power. Now a hilltop 5 miles away is fine for testing image clarity and resolution, but let's take a look at a target a little more realistic distance. This treetop is exactly 50 yards away. At 9 power the image is still very crisp and clear. Moving up to 16 power we get in much closer, but we also start to see some optical aberrations. As you can see, the image is very soft and out of focus all along the outer edge, and even in the center where it's the most sharp, we've lost quite a bit of contrast, yet clear enough that you could make out the nuts on a squirrel. The nuts the squirrel was holding. But let's take a look at the application that I'm more interested in the scope for. 100 yard bench rest shooting with 22 rimfire. I've got it mounted on my Ruger 1022 takedown, and while I'm trying to dial in the scope zero, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to ask you to check out and subscribe to my new channel, Moondog R&D, a channel focused on gadget reviews, photo and video gear, you know, geeky stuff that we're into outside of shooting sports. Speaking of which, let's get back to the range. Now, 22s, well, they don't have a lot of recoil. So it came as no surprise that the scope held zero. With the crosshair centered on my target, I wanted to check, or in this case recheck, whether or not the point of aim shifts when you change magnifications. Zooming out to 4, it remains centered on the bull. As I change magnification, the camera stays in focus, which means the eye relief hasn't changed that much, which can happen with cheaper scopes. Next, I'm going to do a box test. I'm going to rotate each of the turrets a full rotation, which is 60 clicks. 
At this distance, 100 yards, that means that I am displacing the crosshairs 15 inches above its original aim point. And then 15 inches to the right. Now 15 inches back down. And if all goes well, moving it back to zero on the windage, I should return back to its original aim point, which it does. So it passed. The specs list 80 MOA of adjustment and windage and elevation, which is just a hair less than the more expensive Vortex Diamondback. Let's see what that looks like. Bring it down to four and see pretty close to the bottom now. So. Quite a bit of adjustment, elevation-wise. Okay, let's see where we're at. Windage, oh, there we go. That's one end of the adjustments. And that's the other end. And back to zero. So let's do a turret abuse test, or what is colloquially called the nipple twister by Cyclops Joe, one of my favorite YouTube channels, where we rapidly and repeatedly turn the turrets in random directions and then return the dials back to their printed zero and see if the reticle returns to its original point of aim. So the windage did say zero, but as it turns out, I was a rotation off. So I turned it one full rotation to zero again, and it returned to its original aim point. So this scope passed the turret torture test. For the final test, I wanted to do a head-to-head -head comparison between this scope and the UTG bug buster that I usually mount on this Ruger 1022 takedown. It's a good pairing due to its very compact size while offering up to nine power. Obviously, at 16 power, the Rhydon Primal outclasses the UTG Bugbusters 9 power, so I'm going to dial down the Primal to approximately 9 power. Now, looking at them both side by side at the same magnification, we can see a bit of chromatic aberration in both optics, but the Rhydon is clearly sharper and offers more contrast. In addition, the Rhydon's reticle offers a clear field of view to the center bullseye on paper targets. Okay, I'm going to tell you what I really think about this scope, but before I do, like, subscribe, and share. You're still watching, which probably means that you liked this video, and if you did, please hit that like button. More importantly, share this with your friends who like guns and gadget videos. They'll probably enjoy watching something like this, or they might even be in the market for a new rifle scope. Alright, let's look at the good and the bad, starting with where this scope kind of falls short. And it's also one of its strong points that it goes up to 16 power, but at 16 power, its eye box gets annoyingly narrow. Now, I've shot some other high-end scopes with a higher power or up to 16 power, and they had much more forgiving eye boxes. And at 16 power, the image quality and the contrast uh, just isn't quite what I was expecting. Now, granted, it was better than the UTG, which some would say isn't saying much, but isn't quite up to the quality of uh, some other scopes that I own. Now, granted, uh, the Primal X1 is an introductory level scope in Rhydon's product line. I'd be very interested in comparing this level 1 scope with one of uh, Rhydon's level 3 or level 5 or higher Conqueror scopes in, in an equivalent magnification range, though obviously not in the same price range. This scope is a sub $200 scope, which puts it about the same price range as a Vortex, Athlon, or Nikon 3-12 to power scope, but the Rhydon is a higher power and offers more features, so overall a better value especially when you factor in Rhydon's very generous lifetime warranty policy, which is fully transferable, unlike Leopold. Rhydon won't send you a repaired or refurbished scope. Instead, they will send you a brand new scope if your scope ever fails. And coming from a veteran and law enforcement-owned U.S. company, I think I can count on that.
but I don't want to sound like a fanboy or worse yet a shill so I'm just gonna leave it at this if you're used to using a 3 to 9 power hunting scope this is definitely a step up and in terms of its price to performance it's a good value and if you're interested in picking up one of these I've included links in the video description so you can pick it up on Amazon or Optics Planet and it helps support this channel and I appreciate that I hope you got something out of this video and if you did please hit that like and subscribe button thanks for watching Moondog out Hey, if you like this video, please share it on social media. You know, Facebook, forums, MeWe, whatever platform you're on. And if you want to see more videos, check out MoondogIndustries.com.